This is the 2019 NAB AFL mid-season rookie draft. Let's have a look at the draft order for this evening, which has only just been finalised because round 10 had a lot to do with it, Mitch. Well, Melbourne all weekend looked like taking pick two. Their seven goals in the final term meant they take <laughs> now pick three. Uh, we look at St Kilda there at pick eight. They're the last club to add an uh, addition to their uh, list because Paddy McCartan's been placed on the long-term injury list. And there's four clubs, as we'll see, with dual selections. Of those four clubs, I reckon Essendon most likely are the ones that may take two. We've gone with Josh DeLuca, Subiaco Footy Club. Well, Mick, Josh DeLuca, ready-made player coming straight out of the waffle. He's won three waffle premierships, the last uh, being last season with Subiaco. What do you think he's going to add to your list? And is he ready-made to think that he could come in and play this weekend? He played uh, for the waffle against the Sandful only a couple of weeks ago in the state game. Looks like he could walk straight into your footy club. Yeah, I think Josh can play inside and outside and also small forward. I think it would take a while just to adapt to our structures and... Yeah, get to know the boys. So there's no pressure on him, selection pressure, especially early. With pick two, we select Mitchell Reardon from the Dandong Stingrays Football Club. Well, he was overlooked last year's uh, draft narrowly, coming out of uh, the Dandenong Stingrays, has returned this year and over all of those injury concerns that he had. So a burst player, Cal, what do you like about him? And what did you? how close were you last year to selecting him? And you've, you've waited all this time and you've, you've gone again. Yeah, obviously we studied Mitch for a number of years, uh, playing the under-16s and the under-18 national championships. He was unfortunate last year, he missed 15 weeks through to injury. Uh, he came really good towards the end of the year playing in the, it was then the TAC Cup Grand Final, played really well. We tracked him then through the pre-season and over the course of this year and he started really well. Uh, Kyle Dunkley, Gippsland Power. This is fantastic, we see Kyle's uh, family there narrowly and I think the news is just going to be filtered through them as we speak. Yeah, absolutely, we've got Josh Dunkley there, a big smile on his face with a little brother. A kiss from Mum. We love these sort of scenes. And as a club watching these sort of scenes live, geez, that must put a smile on your face. It's, it's reality, isn't it, of what it means? Yeah, absolutely. A young man's dream come true. And, uh, yeah, and tomorrow he'll get to work. So, no, it's fantastic and special for the family. Well, Andrew didn't show a lot of emotion there, let's be honest. Just a little <laughs> smile. Always but, did. Uh, tell us a bit about him and, and what you know of him, what you're expecting, not just this year, but, but going forward. Yeah, look, he, he's, he's played some BFL footy the last few weeks, a couple of weeks with Footscray, where he completed most of his pre-season between Footscray and Gippsland Power. So he's had a steady pre-season at VFL level, which has got him really well conditioned for the, for this year. We're going with Michael Knoll from the South Adelaide Footy Club. Well, this is a bit of a curveball song. We thought that he may have gone to a club in desperate need of a ruckman. You can talk us through the decision because two years ago he was playing at Box Hill in the VFL. Before that, a college basketball career. He's gone over to South Adelaide for need to fill Keegan Brooksby, who went to West Coast, and then Hayden McLean, who's joined your footy club as well. You must have a, your eyes on him for a little while. Look, we have. Uh, actually, we watched him play at Vermont uh, a year or two ago, so um, he's really progressed. Uh, Lockie Hosey from Glenelg Football Club. Bit of a raw uh, character, Mark. He's come out of the Glenelg uh, Footy Club and, um, you know, leading the goal kicking this year. What have you, you seen in him that's uh, really progressed? Because 22 years of age, he's been overlooked in three or four national drafts, but you must have seen enough to, to pull the trigger. Yeah, lucky he's been in the system for quite a while, uh, through the 18s reserves and now to the league level. So we've seen a really strong progression in his uh, progress there. And to see him pr take that next step forward this year at senior level and be leading the Sandville goal kicking at the moment is a credit to him. Yeah, selected Ryan Gardner from the Footscray Bulldogs. Straight out of the VFL. Sam, you've done it again. We know last year you went to the VFL and your uh, footy club and, and went to that pool. We know uh, Will Hayes came out of that. What have you, you liked him since he was delisted by Geelong? at the end of this year, played as a defender, but more recently as a forward. Yeah, we've tried him at both ends of the ground, so forward for the first few weeks and then as a defender more recently. I'm um, just really impressed by his athleticism and his competitiveness um, down there. So we've gone pick seven, we've gone Will Snelling, um, yeah, from West Adelaide Football Club. Um, so very pleased to welcome Will into our club. Yep. I'm going to be honest here, King, we didn't do our research on Will Snelling. He was on Port Adelaide's list for a couple of seasons. What have you liked from him in that period and how long have you tracked him since he, since he left Alberton? Yeah, so we've been tracking him all through his junior years and um, he spent a couple of years at Port Adelaide's list and uh, acquitted himself quite well there. Um, we saw a bit more growth in him this year. Um, he's in fantastic form for uh, West Adelaide in the sample, um, you know, averaging 30 disposals and 10 tackles a game. St Kilda taking Jack Mayer from Subiaco Football Club. Yeah, he's a raw prospect. I've looked in last year's draft, Chris. He's a sort of a third tall. What, what have you liked uh, from him? And he sort of come on with a bit of a burst. Played two Subiaco league games this year, but also spent a bit of time in the reserves. So we must tell the viewers that you're not just looking at the state legs at the top level, you're also looking at, and looking at the level below because Jack's played quite a bit of reserves footy in the waffle this year. Yeah, absolutely. Jack's uh, still quite a, a developing player. Um, coming through the Colts last year, 
kick 50 goals last year in the Colts, so we've sort of tracked him a fair way through, and he's still quite a light body at the end of last year. Well, we've selected Cam Sutcliffe from Port Adelaide. Well, another Fremantle player who's been delisted and picked up. We remember Michael Barlow went to the Gold Coast Suns last year. Matt DeBoer's done it at GWS. JC must be hoping it's third time lucky for a player ready-made out of the sandful you would have been uh, keeping close tabs on, but with him being under your nose in the sandful. Yeah, look, he's made a really good contribution to the club so far and it's been well documented. We've had some injuries to some mature players, so hopefully just gives Ken and the coaches another option if we continue to you know, get some of those injuries and... It's quite versatile and play multiple roles, be it wing um, or down back. So, yeah, look, it's certainly some insurance and, um, yeah, it gives the Ken and the coaches hopefully some options going forward. Well, at pick 10, Hawthorne has it. They have decided to pass, though. So this is the first time in this draft that we've had a pass. In this particular uh, situation, what does it mean at this point? Well, the list spot was open for Tim Moore. He's gone down with his ACL, so we won't see him again this year. Tim Moore, the former Giants defender. So they've got their eyes on their Category B player, Chang with Giath. I know you love him, Kingy. You're already <laughs> lighting up at the moment. So right now, he's not eligible to play unless he takes the spot of a senior listed player. But with the Hawks passing on this pick, the, the door opens for this guy. We got a taste of what this guy can do through the JLT series up at Moreton Bay, and he was just so energetic. He had so much passion to intercept and just get involved. Oh, I think he is an AFL player. I know he doesn't get massive numbers, but what he does really influences the game. Uh, we've chosen Dylan O'Reilly, a young lad from East Fremantle. Um, his father, Stephen, played 98 games for Fremantle, also played for Carlton and Geelong, and Dylan's got uh, a lot of potential, so we're really looking forward to welcoming him down to the club tomorrow. Well, narrowly, Dylan O'Reilly knows where the goals are. He's the leading goal kicker in the Waffle Colts competition two years ago. Bally, he was two games off being eligible <laughs> to be drafted as a father's son. All right, with pick 12, Adelaide had it and they have chosen to pass. So what's the thinking here? Well, I reckon there might have been a couple of guys from the Sanford. Lockie Hosey might have been an option. They might have had someone previously taken that they already had on their board and they thought, no, we may as well keep the 70 grand. Pay it. They've got Hugh Greenwood coming out of contract. We know Brody Grundy is in their sights as well, Kingy. So that's so that's that 70 grand is someone they can use to, to, to put into someone else rather than if they don't think that player's going to make an in, inroads this year, they can, they can save it. Yeah, we've selected Marlon Pickett from the South Fremantle Football Club. Well, surprised here. He was uh, broken his finger on the weekend, Matt. We think six, eight, ten weeks potentially. That hasn't stopped you in this selection because, as we see in the vision right now, probably the best midfielder coming straight out of the waffle. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any um, uh, any concerns from us about the finger being a long-term selection. We think it's a, an opportunity to get Marlon in now. We've uh, locked his talent for a number of years and um, an injury like this will set him back a little bit from uh, training, but we think it long-term be good for us. We've taken John Noble from um, West Adelaide Footy Club. Uh, you guys may well know him as the son of um, Dave, so it's... Um no, we're really excited to bring John to the club. This is fantastic, Kingy, because uh, a couple of years ago, John Noble, furthest thing from his mind was playing league footy, and now he's come in, uh, dominating the start of the year in the Sandful. Uh, Derek, you'll tell us more, but played well in the Waffle game against the Sandful only a couple of weeks ago. How important was that day over there at Optus Stadium oh, no, to come into your thinking? It, it really was. I mean, I think that um, for him to be able to play on AFL bodies... AFL um, grounds. Well, that completes the first round of the mid-season rookie draft. We move on to pick 15. Gold Coast had it. They have chosen to pass. We've got Cody Hurst from the Eastern Rangers. Well, he's one for mine narrowly that slipped a little bit. We had him in the conversation for those first couple of picks. An Eastern Rangers player overlooked in last year's draft. Had a lot of injuries, Simon, last season. But you've gone with him again. He broke the agility record at the Rookie Me Combine last year. That was Stephen Hill's record previously, so he can move a bit. Yes, look, he's, uh, he's running at a pretty good level and with his agility, he plays with that on game day and uh, we think that uh, as a small forward, can play on the wing, that uh, he's got some really good qualities. Well, pick 17. It's the Western Bulldogs. They have chosen to pass. We move on to pick 18 and that is Essendon and they have also chosen to pass. So that completes the recruiting for the 2019 mid-season rookie draft.